Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Archives of American Arts Unboxed Lunch. Before we get started, I want to let you know that this is being recorded. My name is Nora, and I'm coming to you from a windy Washington, DC. Uh, the Archives Gilbert and Ann Kinney New York collector Jacob Proctor is joining us from our Manhattan office. Today's event is all about the records of the historic nonprofit Art in General, which Jacob will be exploring for the first time with all of you in just a few minutes. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. At any time during the webinar, you can ask Jacob a question by submitting it into the chat and I will read questions as the program goes on. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Jacob Proctor, Gilbert and Ann Kinney, New York Collector at the Archives of American Art. You can go ahead, Jacob. Okay. Thanks, Nora. Um, uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so yeah, as Nora said, um, my name is Jacob Proctor, and I am uh, alone, as it were, in our New York uh, Research Center, um, which uh, has been closed, unfortunately, since uh, mid-March. Um, but I'm here in our conference room. I don't know if you can see. I'll tilt down a little bit. and. Um, usually we would do this kind of work in a collection processing room, but because this is such a large collection and because the office is closed, um, I ended up having to take over the conference room to, uh, to do this initial um, unboxing. Um, what you see behind me is essentially the paper archive of Art in General's exhibition program for um, from 1982 uh, through uh, 2019 essentially. Um, and these are all the boxes that things arrived in. A lot of this material was in long-term storage in a warehouse in Long Island. Um, and the first process, first part of this process is to take everything out of these boxes, get it rehoused in nice archival boxes and folders and slide boxes, all of that kind of thing. Um, and get a basic, uh, a basic inventory made and uh, before, so that the collection can be fully processed. Um, a few words about art in general, if you're not familiar. Uh, the institution was founded in 1981 by two artists, uh, Martin Weinstein and Teresa Liska. Um, and it was located um, for most of its life, um, kind of at the intersection of Tribeca and, and uh, Chinatown um, uh, at 79 Walker Street. Um, and unfortunately, art in general uh, closed its doors um, in September, October of this past fall. Uh, basically due to the budgetary uh, constraints that um, were in finan financial hardship imposed by the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, so we, I had actually already been talking with, uh, with the institution about, uh, or with Art in General, um, about donating their papers on the, on the occasion of their 40th anniversary, which would have been 2021. Um, but unfortunately, the process uh, had to speed up dramatically um, when they made the decision uh, to close their doors last fall. Um, so I'm just going to jump in as you can ask questions along the way and we'll get to them, uh, you know, in, in little batches, I think. So you can see this is, I decided to just start at the beginning. This is box number one of the exhibition records. And I should say that in addition to exhibition record, these exhibition files, there are also many, many huge slide binders um, documenting uh, the exhibition history. Um, there are many boxes of communication files, education files, uh, administrative records. Um, there's a whole group of boxes um, of personal files um, from longtime executive director Holly Block. Uh, so there's a lot of material here. This is just like one, this is just kind of the first series that I decided to tackle. Um, I'm helped in this process greatly by the fact that on the occasion of their 25th anniversary in 2000, um, leading up to 2006, um, the, uh, the archives um, did a kind of archival, or not the archives, the Art in General did a kind of archival project of their own. 
um, where essentially they just, they made these binders where they just listed, you know, all of their exhibitions and programs uh, over those 25 years. And they're pretty, it's a pretty, uh, they're not um, hugely detailed, but it's been incredible, it's incredibly useful to have as a guide for moving through um, these, uh, you know, the sort of more fine grained uh, materials that are in the actual files. So let's see what we have here. So in this box, this is from box number one. The first thing I found when I opened it up was this folder just labeled miscellaneous. Um, but inside it's turned out to be some really interesting stuff. Um, and a lot of it essentially is the early, kind of the earliest branding or graphic identity uh, source material for the um, for art in general. Um, so they have like lots of you know, photographs. You probably saw this photograph uh, from the invitation that we sent out. Um, this is print. There are many different prints of this. It printed at various uh, exposures, uh, cropped differently. Um, here, all the stuff that we would do in Photoshop now was of course being done um, all by hand then. Um, and you can see that in this, um, and then here's another early one. And the general, uh, in, uh, in art in general, comes from the fact that the institution was uh, based in, uh, in a building owned by the General Hardware Manufacturing Company. And so that's why it's art in general. Um, and the, it was based there until 2016. So for most of its, uh, most of its life, um, and then when it, after which it moved to Brooklyn for four years in Dumbo, uh, and then very briefly uh, to Jersey City um, in 2020. Um, but you can see with all these, uh, let's see, where, where did it go? Yeah, so- I'm Just gonna ask a quick, question pop in considering the breadth of this collection how many boxes there are how long do you think it will take to process the entire collection uh it'll take a while i mean right <laughs> now because our office here the research center is closed um everyone is working you know everyone is teleworking essentially um so I, i've been here a little bit to get just to get it in the door but it really hasn't, we haven't been able to, uh, you know, to do that work yet. Um, so it's gonna be a while. It really depends on how long the pandemic lasts. Um, you can see in some of these, so this is using one of those art in general, uh, one of those photographs. Then the photographs I should say are from the, ex of the exterior windows of the space. And I like the way that the, you know, the spray painting of the logo, using the existing general on the window and this just adding the spray paint and then these kind of the blurring, intentional blurring of these figures, I think really conveys the kind of scrappy DIY kind of energy uh, that the space um, was founded with. And, but what this folder turns out to be full of are all of these essentially printers mechanicals for early exhibition uh, announcements. Um, and these are all these letters here that you can see these are all hand applied white letra set. And then if you flip it over, you can see this is the, this is all the copy um, from the other side. You can see that this one has actually come off uh, partly at some point over the 40 years since it was created. Um, and I showed you this picture already. And that then became uh, the basis for this, which is a flyer, um, essentially for uh, one of the very first, if not the first exhibitions um, in the space. And you can see it's great that when they, when they opened, they were only open two days a week, just in the afternoons. Um, and so this, for, this, uh, this first box actually includes, you know, five or six years worth of exhibitions. Um, and as the you know, as the institution kind of grew and became more professionalized, you know, each you end up with a box or two boxes per year as opposed to one box for five years. Um, 
And in 1988, the um, Art and General just hired their first uh, full-time executive director, um, which was Holly Block, um, who stayed there for 18 years until 2006 when she left to become the director of the Bronx Museum. Um, and then very sadly uh, passed away um, at, at, at a very young age. Um, but she was really, um, you know, she was an incredibly ambitious uh, and, uh, and beloved figure in the New York art world. And she really grew art in general into, into what it became. Um, this is a, it's, an, it's a very, it's a, it's, a, it's a significant archive because it's a relatively small organization that had, uh, I would say an outsized impact um, on, uh, on the, the history of art, essentially, especially uh, exhibition of new art in New York, both by New York artists, but also by international artists. Another question that kind of goes along with that, Jacob. So this question is about um, how archives and collections are donated. Um, we don't purchase collections, but um, they're wondering if art in general donated the collection, donated the archives, and will every piece of material remain in the collection or will it be curated? Um, they did donate it. Um, that is how all of our collections come to us is through donation. Um, in this case, uh, there will be, um, there will be a, a, a winnowing um, because of the kind of emergency circumstances under which this collection was, was, was acquired and accessioned. Um, there really wasn't time to go through everything carefully uh, beforehand. That had been the initial hope when we thought we were doing this, um, you know, we were going to have eight months to do this. Um, but when it became clear that this, that they were closing and they they were, they didn't, they weren't going to keep their storage space. Uh, it was really a kind of race against the clock to go um, and get these, get these files and just save them from the dumpster, essentially. So I did what I could um, on site in the warehouse uh, to try to, um, you know, leave things behind that I knew we didn't want. But, uh, you know, I, I brought a lot of things here and there's a lot of duplication and things like that. So there, it, there will be a process of, I wouldn't say it's necessarily curating as much as kind of organizing and collating um, and, and, and winnowing a bit. You know, not all records have, or have equal value for research. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. This is box number nine. This is exhibitions from 1991. Let me just pull it forward here. Now, this is a, the files um, for an exhibition called Positions of Authority uh, from 1991. And this was a, a three person, three artist exhibition or two artists and one, uh, one duo. Uh, essentially three, three installations. Um, and it was Judith Weinperson, Leona and McDonald, and Glenn Ligon. And this is a fairly typical folder for this era. Um, so you have, you'll have one, you'll have a, a folder based on, you know, of the invitation and the press release. Um, each artist will have a folder. Um, you know, there's a folder of loan forms. Uh, interestingly, the early exhibitions never had those. That was, a, that, <laughs> that was something that only comes in uh, at the very end of the 1980s. Um, checklists, so on and so forth. Um, this was kind of interesting. So in, the, in this folder having to do with the invitation and the, little, and the brochure that they produced, um, they, uh, there's, a, there's a note and a transcript. So there's a, this is a, they had these kind of condensed interviews um, with the artists in this, in this, uh, uh, in this little brochure. And you can see this like very early nineties computer font. Um, and there's a handwritten note attached to the front of this. Which hopefully you can see. Um, and it says, Dear Holly, here are the interviews, the most reduced as I can possibly make them. They are still much longer than you'd asked for, but I just couldn't find, or I couldn't think of other places to cut without making them totally useless. It, was, it goes on a little bit, and then it says, anyway, um, uh, I look forward to the exhibition. I think it'll be a very good show. And then it signed Miwan. And so this is, 
art in general, one of the reasons why, um, why it's so interesting is because it, it was a place that not only nurtured and gave early opportunities to a lot of artists, but similar, same to a lot of critics and curators and, um, and, and a sort of art, art historians, budding critics. Um, and so this is actually, this is from Miwan Kwan, who is now a very esteemed uh, professor of art history at UCLA. Um, but at the time, and this is her little, the, the, the handwritten bio that was written by someone on staff here, which says she is a writer and the exhibitions coordinator at the Whitney Museum of Art, Art downtown at Federal Reserve Plaza. Um, so it's a nice, nice little uh, historical tidbit there. Um, and I'm gonna open up the, the Glenn Ligon folder uh, here. And so, you know, we have, um, there's some correspondence, there's, there's, some, there's a, a sheet of, <laughs> slides uh, that he submitted. Um, there's, uh, let's see, there's a note here uh, from, uh, from Holly Block saying this letter, essentially this letter is to confirm that you've been selected to participate in an exhibition at Art in General, yada, 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 and then sort of explaining a few things about it. Um, and this actually, brings up something that I'll get back to later, which is that Art in General for a long time, most of their exhibitions appear at least um, from what I've seen to have been uh, based on artists submitting work and then a committee essentially selecting them for exhibition. Um, most of the early shows uh, were group shows um, for exactly that reason. And so and there's a CV, there's a, um, uh, there's a, there's a, you know, a copy of a very early CV from Glenn Ligon, where he, is, he had had, um, he had actually just had an exhibition at White Columns uh, earlier in the year, um, which I think looks like it was one of his, yeah, he had had two or three solo shows before this. Um, and then it's really, it's great when we get to the checklist of his, of what he showed in this exhibition. And it turns out that what he exhibited in 1991 was notes on the margin of the black book. And there are a couple of publicity stills um, showing little uh, you know, details uh, from the work. You can see here, there's the... And it turns out that this, I believe, was the very first um, exhibition, public exhibition of this work. Um, as it was still really in progress. And this is the, the checklist only lists, uh, goes up to number 38 of the photos, um, uh, or 38, uh, and I believe it's much larger now. It's now in the collection of the Guggenheim, um, and where it's actually the dates are 1991 to 1993. Um, so this is, this is a really interesting and significant little bit of history here. Um, There's a fun, um, another piece of history in the chat right now from Claire Henry who says that slides were vital and not to laugh. <laughs> and the I'm men, laughing, you know. <laughs> the Frick and the Whitney used slides and transparencies till until 2000, 2001. Oh yeah, I still, we still use slides when I went to graduate school for art history. I mean, there, I, uh, I worked in the slide library um, for, for as part of my, uh, you know, to sort of help support myself. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not laughing. And then there are a huge, huge number of slides and they don't really come through on, in a context like this, but once these slides are cataloged and hopefully, you know, digitized, this is going to be a huma, an enormous photo, photo archive, um, because there are thousands and thousands and thousands of slides in this collection. There's a couple of questions, Jacob, about, um, when, when, when we uncover the materials or we collect the materials of a big institution like this, what is the relationship between the artists who are documented in the collection and um, the, were they still living artists or foundations or groups outside of the archives and researching and things like that? In terms of, well, for an organization like this that exhibited so many artists, it's actually really, it's especially valuable because it allows for researchers to have like all of these thousands of ways or at least hundreds of ways into the collection. You know, 
some people will come to this, some researchers will come to this collection because they're researching art in general. But in our experience institutionally, that is the, it's, that's not the major way that people come to institutional collections. So it would be someone, in this case, if someone was researching Glenn Ligon, who is now, you know, a, like a very significant American artist of his generation, they would come to this exhibition folder, these folders of materials through searching for him. So this is because there are so many artists that were shown in this case, not all of them eventually, you know, sort of became as significant, but that's, uh, that's a really important element for an institutional collection like this. I don't know if that answers the question. I think, it, I think so. Um, and this is also, let's see, uh, go to, uh, let's see, let's see what they did for publicity uh, in this case. Oh yeah, so this is a case where you have, you know, there are a couple of copies of the, of the press release and, you know, I'll remove extras. We don't, you know, we don't need to have 10 copies of a press release. Um, but also in this folder is kind of interesting. There's a, there's a handwritten sheet of essentially brainstorming, it looks like, which, which critics at which publications um, should get the should get a personalized uh, package and letter. And then there also are is a, a staple bound. So it's a little hard to show, but uh, you know, there were three exhibitions that were up at the same time. Um, there was this positions of authority. There was another called among good Christian peoples and a third called uh, the whole whole series. So, which is a window with a window installation. Um, and you can see this one was addressed to Peter Sheldahl. And it turns out as I was looking through these the other day that like different critics got slightly different, um, <laughs> slightly different versions of this letter uh, based, I, I guess, suppose based on, on, on their perceived interests. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, There's a question here about um, digitization and how that works as, in terms of the um, the archives process. They're specifically wondering if this collection will be digitized. Uh, hopefully, I mean the goal is to is to you know is to digitize as much as possible. Um, the way that things get digitized uh, has a lot to do with workflow and also with funding. Um, so it's a little bit hard to to give a blanket answer. Um, you know some. Ex some collections get digitized based on specific initiatives um, and others eventually get digitized because of demand. We have a digitization on demand pro uh, program where you can, if you are, if you don't want to or are not able as in currently to come to Washington to use the, to look at things in person, um, then you can request them on, you can request that they be digitized for uh, uh, I don't remember exactly how much it is. Um, and it'll digitize the contents of, the, of, of, a, of an entire folder. And then once those are digitized, then they're, on, then they're online and available uh, for everyone. So in addition to all these millions of slide binders, this is one just from 1990-91. Uh, there are also a lot of um, great uh, you know, binders of, of photographs and printed matter and ephemera. Uh, not just of exhibitions, but also of um, of events. Um, this is a. Uh, you can. I'm not going to take this out right now, but this is the initial flyer, and then another flyer for um, a benefit uh, fashion show in 1995 um, that they staged, where they and a number of contemporary artists. Polly Applebaum, Mary Ellen Carroll, Willie Coles, um, Vic Muniz, and many others designed um, articles of clothing. Uh, and then there's, um, there's a lot of documentation of the clothing and also of the fashion show itself. Um, and most of them are slides, but there's a really nice uh, black and white print uh, mixed in here. You, uh, you can see this print of this uh, this fundraiser, it looks very mid nineties. Um, and then in another box, I came across this uh, videotape, which seemed, which I haven't played it yet, but we have a, it appears to be a video documentation 
um, of the show, which is also great. And there are a lot of videos. There are a lot of, there's a lot of AV material in this collection as well um, on a wide range of formats. Um, so that will take a bit of time to, to figure out. Jacob, um, this is another question. What other artists founded organizations have collections from artists, other artists founded organizations have the art, has the archives collected? Um, well, I think we have, it's a little, of our more than 6,300 collections, I think a little over 200 of them could be classified as organizations. Um, so it's not a huge part of the, it's not a huge percentage of the collections, but they often have a significant amount of material. Um, there, we have a few collections that are very analogous to art in general. We have print, the records of printed matter um, up until about two, up through the 1990s. Um, we have the records of thread waxing space, which was another important um, uh, exhibition space in downtown New York. We have Woman House um, from Los Angeles. Um, we just very recently acquired the records of um, an institution called Women and Their Work in Austin. Um, so we do have, we also have, you know, some, we have lots of records of smaller, you know, little clubs and sort of more local organizations and also of much larger organizations uh, some, like American Federation for the Arts or the Carnegie Museum. Um, so it really it runs, um, you know, it's a big, it, we do, we, there are a lot of them, I'll just say that. Um, I'm going to look at a few more photos if we have time. Um, this one I just came across this morning, actually. And this is a photo um, of Emma Amos installing um, her solo exhibition called Changing the Subject uh, in 1994. Um, so that's nice to have. And here's a couple from, so I mentioned that Art in General, um, I think I mentioned their window installations really quite just briefly. Um, and so they had, when they were given this ground floor space uh, on Walker Street, they, they started having exhibitions in the window, in the, the sort of the street level window. Um, and I just came and not, they're not all, we don't have documents of all of them, or at least I haven't found them so far, at least it, I mean, slides, yes. Um, but I just came across um, a couple of days earlier this week, these, this photo, which I don't know. And, um, and then another, de a more detailed version, um, which is an early window installation from, by Paul Pfeiffer. Um, called Survival of the Innocents. Um, and Paul Pfeiffer is another um, artist that really got, I think his first show um, at Art in General when he was still doing his MFA at Hunter. Um, and as far as I can tell, these aren't exactly dated, but from what I can tell, I think this is maybe from Day Without Art in 1993. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in here. And I've, I mean, I've really only just it's the tip of the iceberg. I mean, literally mm -hmm. the tip of the iceberg. Um, There's one last question I think would be interesting to touch on. Are there a lot of emails or digital records or any sort of digital material that's included in this collection or how would it work if there was? There, there is some from more recent years, um, although not as much as, as you would think. Um, we did a little kind of search of the kind of the, the electronic archive um, with the executive director before they closed and it wasn't in the paper files were really much more substantial and more interesting uh, in many cases. Um, there's digital, born digital material stored on discs like photograph, photography, in, you know, there was a point where installation photography switched over to digital. So, you know, there's a, it, the slides stop in like 2006 or seven, and then it picks up um, with digital records. Um, but there isn't, it's not a big, uh, it's not a, as far as digital, born digital archives go, it's not huge. Thank you so much, Jacob. Sure. And thanks everyone for participating. I know we had some great questions that we can, didn't have a chance to get to. And I encourage you to please email me. My colleague dropped my email in the chat. It's ndaniels at, uh, or Daniels N 
at si.edu and we can keep that conversation going. I'd be happy to ask or answer your questions. Um, so I want to thank everyone for attending. This was really fun. And I'd like to let you know that support from friends and supporters like you makes our work possible to support the work of our collectors our and our archivists and help us uh, fulfill our mission to collect, preserve, and share the legacy of American art for future generations, please visit aaa.si.edu slash support. And thank you so much for attending. Bye.